Comment down below. I'm going to have this at the beginning of this video too. Comment down below right now. We're going to prove a point here. If you were in an MLM and you got out because of any creator or any person, any individual that whether it was Instagram, whether it was a YouTuber, whoever it was, comment down below your experience and the person that helped you because I'm trying to see something. Hi guys, it's Isabella here and welcome back to the channel. So today's video, wow, okay. This is a video that's gonna be a two part series because today we are reacting to and fully debunking the entire video that was made by Miss Jessie Lee Ward, Miss Jessie Lee Scammer Ward as I like to call her, and No Shame Sales Game or also Colleen Nichols. There is a lot that we need to dive into in this. Essentially, they came together and did a little bit of an interview discussing how they were essentially calling the anti MLMers out. Let me just say, I lightly skimmed through it and the tiny bit I heard was like shockingly easy to debunk in my head. So we're going to be hopping into that. So again, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. And now let's actually hop into the video. Let's go. Hello, hello everybody. What's going on? It's Jesse Lee. You can call me hashtag boss. And this is the interview you guys have all been waiting for. I'm going to wait. Uh, I'm not waiting for anything. I'm going to have Colleen Nichols come on here. This is uh, really, I'm so excited for this conversation. So um, I know a lot of you have been waiting for this and um, we're going to, we're gonna get going so this is the anti anti MLM uh, conversation and I know this is a hot topic for a lot of you and a lot of you get uh, you know we ask me questions all the time about how I feel about some of this stuff and so we're going to get into it so um, feel free to share this because I'm pretty sure it's, it, I mean, it might get spicy. I don't know what she's going to ask me, but I have a feeling it's going to be good. Uh, it's going to be good. So here she is. I'm very, well, hopefully you're excited too. So she'll be on in just a second. I hope you're excited. And if you guys are new here, two things that I want to say. Two. two things that I want to say in regards to this is Miss Jessie Lee Ward is a self-claimed number one network marketer in the world, which is factually not true. I'll pop up proof right over here. And then Colleen Nichols is the individual that I've talked about many times. I actually have a playlist called um, The Problem with No Shame Sales Game. She has an Instagram account that is dedicated to changing the network marketing industry. And if you guys want to just get a little bit of a taste of the problems of this woman and how vile she is, just watch that playlist. But nonetheless, they both have major influence in the network marketing industry. Now let's actually keep listening people actually about this interview so i'm just gonna get my lighting a little better because it's a little dark oh, in here but sucks. yeah can you hear me okay i can hear you fine so how you been oh so good business is exploding like we talked about so um both of us i think our businesses are just like well it's things that like we'll jump right into it people are look at all these people um it's one of those things that I think on a, you know people who are just starting in network marketing or they've been in there for a while get messages all the time people are like people are being mean to me or they're saying mean things. And I had one person write a mean capture or mean comment on my post. And I'm like, Oh my God, that's so sweet. That somebody wrote a mean comment on your post. So like, how so I know this is very like, we just hopped in, but what I would like to state how their definition of mean versus the reality of mean are two entirely different things. Their definition of mean is somebody calling somebody out for being a part of a multi-level marketing company or marketing of a multi-level marketing company. Whereas being mean is actually being mean, being an asshole to somebody, doing fucked up things, doing messed up things, just like both of them participated in recruiting people into an unethical industry. I love how their first response to somebody that says, oh my God, I got a mean comment, they're like, ah, oh, how good of you. Oh, how nice. And they label it as mean and not what it actually is. Calling out a problematic action. Do you have people on the internet that don't like you? <laughs> <laughs> what an epic first question. Okay, so Kali wants to know if Jesse Lee has anyone on the internet who doesn't like her. I mean, it is, I, it is shock and awe, you know, shock yeah. and awe um, that that I do, in fact, have quite a, a, quite the following of haters. Yeah. And um, I got to tell you, it's we can get deep, deep into this, but I will say... I have friends who will say stuff like haters are confused fans. I truly believe in that. Truly. Uh, truly. Um, and then I will also say that the more people who started liking me less and less and less and the louder and louder and louder and louder and louder they got, the bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger my businesses grew. I actually posted There's something I have to state that I think is complete bullshit because they'll uh, like people that vocalize the problems that they have with, let's say, Jesse Lee or uh, Colleen, for example, like they're coming to other channels to watch. It, 
like I'm sorry, but the correlation of growing your business, no. Okay guys, so something I actually wanted to talk about real quickly, mainly two things. So this is actually something that um, Jesse was just referring to, talking about analytics, SEO, and how allegedly anti-MLMers are helping her out with her business and essentially giving them a profit, both No Shame Sales Game and Jesse Lee. And I'm actually completely back to differ. Um, she actually posted up this Instagram story yesterday and I wanted to show you guys. So she is gonna talk later on in this video and also currently about her analytics and how quote unquote impressive somebody thought that they were. And she posted them and I looked because I was like, okay, like, yeah, what are her numbers? I'm going to be honest with you here. And I'm not even, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying for someone of her quote unquote stature being the alleged number one network marketer in the world, as she calls herself, being someone who's such a powerhouse in the industry, that's low. And I'm going to be honest with you here. I've pulled numbers higher than that. And I'm not saying that to kiss my ass. I'm literally saying as somebody that is as small of a creator as myself, because technically in the YouTube community, I'm a creator, but I'm small. That's low. <laughs> That's very low. And also, I'd like to continue on and say, yes, yeah, some people are looking you up. And absolutely. But where are they watching it? Because when I have a higher engagement than you on my channel or my Instagram for crying out loud, and you have a bigger following than me, that should scream red flags. So maybe they're looking you up, but where are they watching the content? Where are they actually paying attention to? The content that we're posting, calling out Jesse Lee and other individuals. So I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit surprised that she had the nerve to post up that low of analytics worldwide, mind you. When you get 22,000 people that are searching you up worldwide like that at such a low pace, that that's not good babe i'm sorry but that's not good and to further my point as i was editing this video looking at the collab video that's posted on both no shame sales gain and jesse lee's video i mean page the video doesn't even have 5,000 views yet not even 400 likes so you're telling me that this collab post that's on a page of 240,000 instagram followers for jesse and 104,000 instagram followers on no shame sales game somebody who's a self-proclaimed MLM coach and someone who's a self-proclaimed number one network marketer in the world. But this video right now that you guys are watching is going to get more likes and views. And I am way, 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 way smaller than that. I'm just saying, if we're going to whip out the numbers thing, babe, what you're showing is embarrassing. I cannot like an individual or what they're doing. And that doesn't mean I confusingly like them. The logic here, again, reminder, these are the two of the, some of the best in the industry. And these are the arguments that they're giving. And we're hardly even three minutes in. My, my uh, Google analytics that were sent to me by someone who runs SEO and keyword searches and whatever, he sent it to me last night. He's like, Jesse Lee, this is like very impressive. I'm like, well, I couldn't have done it alone. <laughs> Talking is talking is talking. And I say that all the time. Like the reason I like got started in doing what I do, like, is because I saw how loud like they can be. And I'm just like, we need more like loud people on our side, right? Like they're just so loud. There's not being and so we're just like making waves. So yeah, okay, people don't like you. Um, they don't like me. We were DMing. Well, actually, hold on a second. Like, I'll actually answer it a different way too. I don't think it's that they don't like me and I don't think it's that they don't like you. No. I think it's that they don't like themselves. Yeah. That's very Dr. Phil of you to say, it's true. Well, you know, um, let's, let's you know, make a video about this. Just call me Dr. Jesse Lee, I said that. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> in, in all seriousness though, um, I, re I, don't, I don't blame them. If you failed at everything in, in your life, if you have tried and tried and tried again, and you think that you've done all the right things, and you're not seeing success, and you never had your breakthrough, and you don't understand the process of little simple habits compounding over time, and then it's so much easier to blame everything else instead of taking responsibility and accountability for your actions and for your results. Yeah, I would probably blame you. Yeah, the first statement that let's talk about, the they don't like themselves. That's something I'm noticing that they're hopping onto. Again, just because somebody doesn't agree with you doesn't mean that they hate themselves, Jesse. Also, Colleen is laughing at this too. I'm just saying that has nothing to do with if they like themselves or not. I personally think that Jesse Lee loves herself, for example. If she doesn't like me, that doesn't mean that she dislikes herself, in my opinion. I don't like these two individuals. However, if they don't like me, I'm not gonna say, oh, well, you just don't like yourself. That makes no sense. You can be not have a problem with the action that someone's taking a part of and still love yourself. You can call out problems within an industry or situations in general and still like yourself. Also, I find it ironic how Jesse Lee is immediately right out the gates jumping into an entire argument of, well, you know, I would be upset with myself and I'd be blaming everyone else too. If I 
failed at absolutely everything. That again is a very highly flawed like argument. And I would even say, in my opinion, I feel like this individual is a narcissist. Again, that's my personal opinion. I will leave it at that. But all I'm saying is her participating in the minimization of everyone else's experiences is disgusting. Even right here, narcissists systematically minimize anything that makes them look or feel bad. They make excuses for their bad behavior by blaming others immediately. And they may deny outright that they have done anything destructive. Narcissists know that minimizing and stonewalling is hard for others to fight. Their minimizing reveals a double standard where a narcissist insults or hurts another person, they hardly give it a second thought. But when a narcissist feels slightly slighted, it can feel like the end of the world to them. Hence this video right now. It's actually amazing to me how this is her first response is, well, you know, I'd be bothered too if I just failed at everything. Like I even, again, don't like these individuals, but I know that they haven't filled at everything. Just like on this ex external argument, if someone doesn't like me, that doesn't mean that they failed at everything. Just because maybe someone doesn't like my job as a YouTuber and they think it's stupid. Okay, you have a right to believe that, but that doesn't mean that they failed at everything. They can have a perspective and a thought process without being a total failure. Notice how that's their argument. And I would also like to preface and state that imagine having this argument that they are hosting right now, but they started debunking all of our regular claims and videos. Like I'm talking showing facts, statistics, actually hardcore proof. But instead, this is just random word vomit at this point. Because it sucks to watch somebody who's doing well, right? Like it sucks to be like sitting wherever you're sitting. And I'm sure they would say like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I love my life. I'm in my favorite cubicle. Like it's great. Um, but they just, it's hard. To, and I, I, but I want to like sympathize with those people because I've been there. I've been on the other side watching people succeed when I wasn't. And I was like, fuck this person. Like I hated watching their stuff. I hated okay, Colleen, then that what that's a you problem, baby girl. I'm not sitting here looking at someone that's doing better than I am in regards to YouTube business or anything. I'd be like, oh, fuck that person. That's a you issue in general. And someone criticizing the entire industry and the actions that are unethical and easy to debunk, they are not people that want to be in your shoes, love. They don't. I would never in my right mind ever, I don't care how much money Jesse Lee or Colleen has, I would rather there were, I would rather have a lot of other things happen in my life than ever be in that woman's shoes. She got there and the way that she lives is unethical and very messed up. And that is not something I would ever want to do. I get it because I've hated people for being successful. I'm not hating you for being successful. I dislike you. I don't hate you for that matter. But I dislike the way you became successful. It's problematic and it's harmful to people. It's not about hating you because you have a lot of money or you have a lot of attention. It's disliking the way you're doing it and the way you continuously lie to your audience members. Proof that I have for that is the examples of, for example, Miss Chelsea, my one of my best friends who has talked about Jessie Lee Ward a lot. She literally has so many videos about Jessie. You should definitely go check them out. They are amazing amazing at debunking Jesse. And I know myself, even my best friend Deanna as well. We both have called out No Shame Sales Game many, many times. And the proof is all there. And I will have all this linked in the description below. You know, the happy stuff they're talking about. And then finally, I was like, shit, like, if she can do it, then why don't I just stop hating for a second and just try it? And then maybe I could go on a proof. I mean, I can answer that too. It's another psychology thing. So again, Dr. Jesse Lee will come out for you. But people don't like change. They don't. People are very resistant to that. And so if you're constantly told that you're supposed to believe one thing and you're constantly told that the honorable way of living is to struggle and the honorable way of living is to go to work from eight o'clock in the morning until five o'clock at night. And by the way, hold on a second, because people, not everybody's an entrepreneur. Okay. No, no. I am not shaming jobs. I am not shaming anybody going to, uh, to a job. And I actually like part-timers in network marketing more than I like full-timers in network marketing. We can get into that conversation too. But I will tell Okay. Pausing this. Yes, I agree. That is a good statement. You shouldn't be bashing other people and not everyone is meant to be an entrepreneur. Thank you. Absolutely. However, when we see the industry is kind of set up in a way to where so many people will cold message anyone and they will recruit anyone, not someone that maybe is qualified or more qualified for the job, as long as it is someone they can recruit the business, that is a problem for that matter. I tell you, it, it baffles me. Like, nobody is saying anything about your cubicle in the sense that it was funny though. Like, but if you're miserable doing that and you can understand that supplementing an income could bring in an extra couple hundred dollars a month and you do not have to do this remotely full time. Like, who are you for not, like, what are you saying about yourself by knocking those men or women's hustles? It just does not make any logical sense to me. Um, but I mean, I, I love people who have jobs. I love people who, you know, are in their career path of choice. What I don't understand, what I don't understand is people who, this wasn't for you. And you violently and viciously attack it 
for people that it is for. And you don't take down, you don't talk, you don't talk about the profession. You literally talk about the people. Yeah, but then that, that, I don't have money. I don't know where your logic is coming from, but that's completely not true. The proof is literally all of our channels. Again, something I've talked about many times is how in the world can I say that somebody's doing something if I don't have any proof of it, correct? I need to have proof. Hence why I have reactionary videos. People are gonna listen to me more when I have a visual showing exactly what somebody's doing, how they're doing it, how they're voicing it. Because me saying, oh, Jesse Lee Ward is saying that I don't like myself because I don't agree with them. Some people that maybe are supportive of multi-level marketing companies would be like, okay, like what? If I have a visual proof of it though, you're gonna be like, okay, yeah, she did say that. Like you can't deny it. I need visual proof. And saying that we don't go after the companies, again, I would like to state that so many of us behind the scenes and Again, I don't know much and I'm not going to disclose much, but I don't think these individuals know how much work so many creators put on behind the scenes. We took the time to just listen to us. We would literally be having, we have our entire channels or examples of how we literally call out the problems within the company, but also we do call out how individuals are using the company for their own personal benefit. That's something, again, I would like to disclose. My personal channel, I mainly focus on top leaders and people with a high influence because they have control of information. I feel like most people in the company are brainwashed and naive. Absolutely, I do believe that. Do I think the top percent is? I personally do not. I feel like after so long, you do and do know where your money's coming from, how the industry works, and you are completely self-aware. And that's why I call those types of people out. I'm sorry, but I can I call out the industry and the company and not just the person. Like if I was gonna just talk about the person, then that means I would be talking into all of their personal life, their family, everything about them. Whereas when I do personal deep dives on top leaders or individuals, I show what they do in regards to the multi-level marketing company. So that logic is completely flawed. People were talking about profession and you're like, well, then why are you making fucking YouTube videos about me? Like, this is very weird. It's strange. Yeah. And that's what another person was, uh, responded. They were like, are so can they just like set it straight? Like, are we predators or are we victims? Because it changes with the wind. Cause it's like, oh, these people are predators um you know preying on vulnerable women and then in the next breath it's like oh my god they're victims of brainwashing and like pick a side <laughs> Honestly, here's my thought process, actually. I do think she partially listen, listens. I think she's well aware. I do think also Jessie Lee is very much well aware of her actions and how things actually go in this industry. They know. They totally know. However, they choose to ignore the points that they make. They create their own and they act as if we literally have not addressed 90% of the things that they've talked about in this video. Yes, most people that join multi-level marketing company, it starts out as a victim. Absolutely. For example, there have been many people, and I believe Jessie Lee, for example, who started off and someone recruited on her and her vulnerability, correct? Even Colleen, someone recruited her and her vulnerability. Every person was recruited by somebody and that person maybe had no idea about the industry or company at all. However, you then try and push and keep working throughout the entire business. But what we start to notice is after you hit a certain point in the company, correct? You start to see, because a lot of these top leaders actually have connection to corporate America. They're close to the CEOs of the multi-level marketing company. They have access to these people. And so then when they start seeing their paycheck and actually where their money's coming from, it starts to turn into a, I know where my money's coming from. I know in order for me to get anywhere, I had to have a team. Again, more criticism coming, calling out what I'm doing but I don't give a shit because I'm making too much money. That's where it goes. It was never a flip-flop to begin with. My personal argument, and again, I can't speak for everyone, was exactly that. Everyone, in my opinion, starts off as a victim of getting recruited in this. Most people don't know, and that is exactly why we make videos and other people make Instagram posts. We're trying to spread the word and spread awareness about it. But then again, once you are in there for so long, once you are part of the industry for so long, you start to notice the patterns. You start to notice where your money's coming from. And here's my thing too. Once you hit the top, and you have criticism, and again, you know exactly how to make the money, you know where your money's coming from, but you keep getting criticism calling that exactly out and saying how unethical it is, and you choose to ignore, you are no longer a victim anymore. You are choosing to do it still. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's, the, that's a long conversation we can get into. Um, Cause I, I'll tell you my, I mean, some of you don't, I see a lot of people hitting follow, hopefully on both sides, right? Yeah. Um, and some of you don't know my story then. I, I was in a, I was in a basement when I started all of this. The story's never changed. And my best friend from, from when I was five years old is now in business with me for the first time ever. I've never recruited friends and families. So this is like very new for me. Oh. Uh, I was like the victim though. Like I'd be the person you would say is the victim. I was in the basement. I was in a vulnerable position. My, my car didn't work and my, my lifestyle was terrible and I couldn't go out with friends. It was like as soon as 
I took control over that and I said, wait a minute, so it's just a sales model. All I have to do is sell. And then if I want to sell an opportunity, then I can do that too. And then I can choose if I want to coach and teach and train this, that, or the third. Okay, as soon as I became... When she said, I chose to take control and I chose that it was a selling model, but then I can also sell business opportunity and I could choose if I wanted to, you know, run a team and all that. If you want to move up in any multi-level marketing company, you have to recruit. Again, Colleen's right now. We're pulling up the compensation plan over here. What do you see? You can't even hit your ranks at all without having a team. Why is that? You need to you need to recruit. There is no way around it. Again, Jesse Lee's team. The compensation plan clearly shows in order for you to rank up or grow in any way, you have to recruit people. Any way for you to make substantial money in both of your multi-level marketing companies, anything that could actually genuinely help you out, you had to do that. It wasn't about choosing. You needed to do it in order to actually grow in this company. So yes, absolutely, I do agree that Jesse Lee was at first a victim, but I personally believe after so long of her doing well, she knows the unethical actions and she has a horrific track record. Again, I will have a Boss Lee deep dive that was created by Chelsea popping up over here, um, but she has a horrific track record of how she has treated people, how she has worked in the multi-level marketing industry, and it's shocking. So after so long, was she a victim? Absolutely. But she, after that, chose because she wanted to make that money so badly and she would do anything, allegedly in my opinion, to make that happen. You know, the 1% or even like the 5%. You know, I don't even think I was at the top when people started going, oh, it went from like, well, she was a victim. Okay. She was absolutely a victim. And then she got so brainwashed by the whole entire thing. And she had so much success that, uh, that, uh, now she is a predator. It's like, you like, wait a minute, hold on. Hold on. Like this is another thing I would like to also state as well. Now, again, some people might not always agree with me on this, but I will say, if you are on somebody who's maybe naive in the company, and I do feel like there are a lot of people that maybe follow me who were naive and who were inside of a multi-level marketing company, and some of you all did participate in the recruitment, did you not know exactly all about the system and how bad it was? No, you. a lot of you guys didn't know at all. However, was there still participation in unethical action? Absolutely. Now again, I am in no way bringing this up because I don't want people to feel guilt or shame if they are out of that. I am so proud of you for getting out of that. And the point is to educate and move forward. That's okay. Multi-level marketing companies, it's set up to where you're told that this is the way you're supposed to do it and listen to your mentor. And then you end up doing progressively predatory actions to get there because you think, oh, I'm listening to the professionals of what I'm going to do. For example, if I'm a part of a company and my boss is telling me to go do something and I'm unaware, right? But I know it's a part of my job because my boss is telling me. But then come to find out later, it was unethical and it was actually something that was violating, violating compliance in that company. I did an unethical thing, but I didn't know it until it was either told to me or I hit a point where I started doing it enough to where I knew that it was an unethical action. You see what I'm saying you're not actually making sense because I chose to be successful in something just like you can choose to be successful in whatever you want and we should get into de like determining what the word success even means we can totally define that but like you can't say both you can't, you can't tell me I was a victim 11 years ago and then now I'm the predator because I've had I, I can't that's vi I, I just like we were I mean I just explained that now so I don't need to but you can easily say that there's a transition that can happen of people being a victim. Just for example, let's say this is in no way the same as being in a multi-level marketing company, please no. But I am just saying this as an example of something that was a victim that turned into not being the victim. For example, myself and maybe how I was raised as a child. If I had a, a certain experiences with my parents that were really bad, I was a victim as a child. However, if I chose to grow up and treat my children like shit and be like, well, I mean, that's how I was raised, so it's fine. That's still messed up. Then it turns from not only was I a victim, but I transitioned into being the person that was doing the unethical things. You can start out as a victim, but take on the things that you learn from being a victim and project them. And that's what I feel like these individuals are doing now. Due to my work, it doesn't make logical sense, but we're not really speaking to logical people, so there's that. <clears throat> Again, the random jab, we're not speaking to logical people. Where's the proof that we're not logical here? We're the ones that have sources every single video we make. Where's the source in any part of this video? Where's the proof in anything? So, damn it, you just said something. We can talk about this. What did you literally just say? I don't know, a lot. <laughs> that's why I do the notebook thing, man, because I start rambling. And then... Literally, that's what I need to do. I have my notebook over here, but I came to the window. Um, but Maybe the success thing, I don't know. It's the success thing. Okay, success. why don't we find success? Because that's another thing that we get a lot of shit for is that they're saying, okay, well, you know, you need to, like, everyone's saying, oh, you're going to be a millionaire. You're going to quit your job. You're going to drive the free car. You're going to go on vacations. But like, 
success doesn't look like that because for most people, an extra $300 a month is life changing. That is successful if you are doing something that just moves the needle in your life a little bit, right? So what, even though you are Jesse Lee and you're super duper successful, you know, the one, that doesn't mean that that's what success looks like for everybody. And if they're not you, then they're failing, right? Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, good Lord. Yeah, let's go into this. So this is a very good argument, absolutely. However, have a lot of us anti-mill creators addressed this already? 100%. I personally believe right now that Jesse and Colleen are purposely making statements, acting as if we've never addressed it, to give the illusion that we are just complete stupid fucking people, even though we have already addressed these arguments many times before. They are correct when they state that success is defined differently by most people. And where can we define success in that? My personal thing is success would be defining making more than what you actually invested in. So being properly compensated for the amount of effort you're putting in. That should be defined as success. That can range from different numbers, correct? However, people should be making more than what they're putting in. And that is the numbers that we see is most people in these companies put more time, effort, and specifically money into the companies than what they actually are receiving. Again, take for example, we have Monet over here. I'm gonna pop up income disclosure statements. I'm gonna pop up numbers. I'm gonna show you exactly where this is talking about. And all these income disclosure statements do have areas sometimes where they state how people sometimes spend a decent amount of money putting into their company. And even for example, prove it. I literally talked about this not too long ago. Prove It literally states that there is a range of 200 to at least $1,000 that some people will put in. Her own company states that most people that participate shouldn't expect a profit. They shouldn't expect a profit for a hot minute because they are paying in more money than they are getting. So while yes, if this industry was actually ethical and people were at least making something or something that would be beneficial to them, yes. However, most people are not getting that whatsoever. Most people just see the paycheck that they receive from their MLM and they're like, oh, Oh my God, I got paid, but they're not doing the accounting where they see how much money they've spent, where they spent money on the starter kits, on the monthly fees, on the other products that they needed to purchase. They're not adding it up to see. And even for example, my best friend, Deanna, um, she shared many times how that's what she thought for the longest time. And again, she shared this, her personal stories, and many other people that have watched my channel have shared with me how they were like, oh my God, well, I'm getting paychecks, so that's fine. But they didn't realize that they were spending way more money than they were getting in, so they ended up being in the negatives instead. So yes, making a couple extra hundred dollars, absolutely, that's transformative, that's life-changing. I have been there before completely. However, that is not, that, that's our problem. It doesn't happen for most people. But when most people aren't even getting the bare minimum or making and breaking even from their expenses, that's our logical problem. Something that you cannot argue with. If she had proof that we were full of shit, she could show that, but she chooses not to. Because newsflash, there is no proof to counter us when the statistics aren't lying. Success to me when I started was $300 a month, period, full stop. Mm -hmm. Okay, I did not, you, and, and to be totally honest, if I had been recruited by somebody who said to me, do you know you can make a million dollars or millions of dollars a year doing this? I would have never signed up I because I would have been like, scam alert, scam alert, scam alert, Ponzi scheme, yeah, ah! like I would have been like, um, hell no, you freaking scammy, scammer, scammer, McScammerson. Like yeah. I would have never been interested. My interest level was I cannot pay my bills. I'm getting my rent increased by $300 a month. I have one month left to make an extra $300 a month. My job, I cannot get a $300 a month raise like this. It's not a thing. So I had to figure something out or I get evicted. This is the real story. Yeah. I mean, I've told it a million times. So I'm like, oh my God. Okay, so I just need $300. I literally just need to make $300. What can I do for $300? And I asked the person I'm renting the room from in the basement. I said, well, I don't know how to, I, I, can't, I don't know how to make $300 a month. And they said, I don't know, start one of those at-home businesses. And I said, like Avon? She's like, yeah, like Avon. I'm like, I am not selling Avon. Like I'm, like, I'm 22, you know, at the time, right? So I'm like, that's not happening. Success was $300. And I mean, big success. That was life-changing, $300 a month. Yes. For me, it's like, how, how can you say it's not successful if, I'll say all kinds of weird scenarios. If a, if a single mom has an extra $50 so she can go get what she wants from the grocery store or from the, buy a pair of shoes she's had her eyes on or buy, you know, go to Target and not feel bad about buying a can. Let's entertain that argument. That is a valid argument. There is nothing wrong with the single mom, for example, having extra money. But how much did she have to pay into the company in order to possibly make that money? 
Most of the starter kits for any company in the purchasing of products is exceptionally high. So let's say she had an extra $50. Did that include the taxes? Is that technically did that $50, did she actually make it? Or is she still in the negatives because she's already spent maybe $200 getting started with a multi-level marketing company, which that's a pretty fair number that most multi-level marketing companies have. I'm just saying there's nothing wrong with extra money. And also here's the problem too. The uplines that are benefiting off of that single mom that misled her to think that she might have financial security or be able to make an extra couple hundred dollars for that. And again, we're not even including the actual businesses as a whole and how they lie constantly publicly on their websites and social media to people promising and trying to say that we can bring you some form of financial stability. And that's the problem. Promising and eluding financial stability or extra money when most of the time that does not happen statistically. For herself or whatever. That's success. Who's to say success is even monetary? Right? Yep. Because there are so many people. Okay, so I'm like really big on TED Talks. I'm really big on personal development. I'm big on all this stuff, right? <laughs> And I was listening to this TED talk, I think it was just yesterday, and they're talking about how one of the most dangerous things to somebody's actual overall health, not just mental health, not just physical health, not just emotional health, overall welfare and quality of life and length of life is in direct correlation to the amount of happiness they have in relationships, in relationships. This is not MLM conversation. This is scientifically data proven information, okay? One of the longest studies on age ever, the longest study on age ever to exist. Yep. You have just taken people away from each other for almost two entire years now. And you're telling me it's not success if somebody joins a opportunity, joins a business and finds some of their best friends. So now we're getting to the argument of talking about happiness. Yeah, she's right that happiness is significantly important in relationships and just to keep you a good, healthy person. That is true. Yes, I will admit when she's right on these things. However, again, we are still connecting this to multi-level marketing and saying, well, how can you say it's not a success if someone joins to be friends with people? Why are you paying them to have friendships? I like to tell people that I understand the community aspect is marketed off heavily in multi-level marketing companies, but trust me when I say that is not something that I would recommend when the motivation to recruit you is more financial and money-based instead of actually making friends people that call message 100 times a day do you think the motivation is just to have that friend it's just to get somebody on a team because what network marketing really does is it turns complete strangers into friends which by the way is just like anything everyone was once a stranger before yeah. they were a friend so don't get all huffy puffy on that either okay they get huffy puffy on everything but like it turns strangers into friends and friends into family. And when I look at my friend circle now, it is not conditional based off of if they're in business with me or not. I've had plenty of people leave business and they are still absolutely family members to me, right? Yep. doesn't matter. But I would have never met them if I didn't have the relationships. And you know what else is successful? Turning yourself from somebody who's completely underdeveloped as a human being into, whoa, hold on a minute. Now I'm educated. Now I understand about NFTs. Now I understand about uh, wealth management. Now I understand about personal development and speech. Now I understand. She's saying another form of success is gaining knowledge. And I think gaining knowledge in general is just a great thing. Do multi-level marketing companies go out of their way to recruit people and hire them off of experience? No, they literally go on about how you don't need to have experience to do well in this industry. We have most people that are the blind leading the blind, the uneducated leading the uneducated, and we have a lot of people that claim that they know what they're doing when they don't. For example, we have the WFAB girls of high genius. They talk about cryptocurrency, NFTs, but they are literally, I have way too many people that are financial investors that share information and show and prove to me that these people have no no concept of what they're doing or the information. I've come across iGenius trainings. It's bullshit. It's like, it's not even good for that matter. It works. I literally have been working on a deep dive for it works. The it works company and the promoters will promote skinny teas and skinny coffees when those are actually dangerous for you. They don't even work, etc. So claiming that you can get all of this knowledge, you might be able to learn some things with an MLM, but that doesn't mean that you automatically have smart and educated people in the companies that are teaching you something. Majority of the time, it is the exact opposite. And again, you can learn all these things externally from your MLM without going into debt and spending money to be a part of it, mind you. And about sales. Now I can take my sales information and go get a job at Burlington Coat Factory. I don't know where that just came from, right? And go sell whatever they coat, right? Like couches, whatever they sell, right? You can take these skills that you learn in this. That is a de that is success. Yes, is success. And you can deploy that into the world. So to me, it's like, for me, for me, yeah, I'm, I am the anomaly. I am not the norm. And I say this on every single podcast I open. Do not listen to what I'm saying as an income claim. Do not think that I am normal. Do not think that you're going to join and you're going to get rich quick. I will outwork every single person in the space and not even just network marketing in the business world, right? I am, that's just, that's just my DNA. Yeah. So what yeah. success is for me is different than you, yeah. but it's different than all the people watching this as well. Correct. And so I think that that's a conversation that 
network marketers also need to start having is like make it realistic and like i hate the term i hate the phrase realistic because anything that i've ever done is not realistic anyone has told me to do anything like that's never going to happen that's not how it's going to be like i need to set more realistic goals <clears throat> but like you we can't be casting vision for people and like highlighting these multimillionaires and all these things thinking that like that's the only version of success we need to have a wider more, like a deeper understanding of what success looks like in this business and it's not just oh i came in and i made millions of dollars same i want to make 500 dollars a month as a stay-at-home mom that would like and that wasn't like my first paycheck success like yeah. if one day i could make 500 dollars a month i would have been mind blown and just you know so i, I think that conversation about success um needs to be had by everyone i yeah. think one of the most important conversations because yeah. I think you make men and women feel like crap when they're in the journey. And like yeah. the reason I work the way I work is a, because it's who I am in my DNA, like I said, but second of all, I like showing people what's actually possible. Yeah. So if I'm the pace setter for the whole profession, by all means, I just want to show you what, what you can do. It doesn't mean you have to do it. It just, I'm trying to show you what's possible, but to what you just said is so important. So I want to back it up to that. Too many people, and I'm talking about leaders now, because I know there's leaders watching this right now. They're probably like hiding in the shadows a little bit. It's cool. We see you. It's all good, boo. Well, we don't see you, but we know we know you're there sitting in the wheat fields, okay? Like hiding behind the bushes. It's cool. We're listen, but not. Yeah. If I could give you any directive, please start sharing the stories of very much so real people and very much so, like your highlight from the other. I was like, oh my God, girl, you got to <laughs> save this. Like it is so important that people hear real stories and it is so important people understand that supplemental income in not even just 2022 but we're in 2022 is so important and i post stuff intentionally like for me yeah i go to a gas station i don't care what the price is okay i just don't um it's just a stage of life that i'm in right i drive supercars you can't you shouldn't be driving a supercar if you're looking at the pennies on the on the whatever that just is not logical okay so but i sit there and i still post in my stories the gratitude for being able to fill it up regardless of what the price was on it Yep. And the reason I do that is because when I started this, I, this is like people, <laughs> the girls who get it, will get it. The girls who don't, don't. When I started, I was driving a Ford Focus ZX3, like 2001. And it was like the ugliest color. It was a stick shift. It was manual because it's cheaper when it's manual because a lot of Americans can't drive manual. Right. So, and I'm from Maryland. And in Maryland, we have the Appalachian I know Mountains. I don't know if you, your face is telling me you didn't know I'm from Maryland originally. So yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm from Maryland. We're from the, from the mountains, Maryland. And I would throw the car in neutral and coast down the hills to save gas money. And my brother was always like, you're going to blow out the transmission on that thing. I said, I don't care if I can roll up and get like an extra 10 miles on this tank of gas. I never got to fill up a tank of gas. I never got to do that. Yeah. Never. So yeah. when I go and I do fill up a car now, I do take the photo because my gratitude, I still go to that place of, damn, I remember exactly what it's like to lie to my friends and say, no, 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 I, I, I no, I, I can't go out. Um, no, we're not going. I, I'm just really tired. I wasn't tired. I was broke. Mm -hmm. Right. And I remember what it was like to, you don't know if your car is going to turn over and start or not. I remember what it was like to, to have to get really creative in carpooling to get to meetings in Maryland, which is not a big state, but because I didn't have money, I had like $5 to contribute to a gas pool. Mm -hmm. Like, that's where it started. So if you look at the whole picture of what success is, yeah, you're right. It started out as $300 a month. And then when I was like, oh, I can make $300 a month. Hold on a minute. Okay. It went, can I make five? And then I made 500. And then I went, can I, can I make a thousand? Mm? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And then it, it was never, I didn't, I never joined this for free cars. I never joined this for free trips. Mm -hmm. I never joined this for private jets. I never joined this thinking I can make a million dollars. I think that's the problem though. Most people don't join for that. They join for the bare minimum. They join for the little bit that can help them. And again, she is an example of a success story. Do I know all of her financial information? No. Have I heard a lot of things in regards to her finances? Yes, absolutely. However, Let's say she is completely telling the truth with this specific story. She started off with that goal. Most people do. She was a very lucky individual to be able to get enough people under her to make this a reality, though. Most people don't do that. And think about how exhausting that is. Like, genuinely, think about this, you guys. How exhausting must it, must it be to have your entire livelihood depending on recruiting people. This is the problem. The industry is set up to where in order to survive, this is what you have to do. I was thinking I could make a million dollars or more a year. I never joined this for anything. I joined this because I was broke. Yeah. And I felt like I had no other option. There was no Uber Eats when I, well, I couldn't Uber Eaten anyway because my car couldn't make it to your house. So <laughs> <laughs> but like there was no Uber Eats, there was no Grubhub, no, there was no Uber, no DoorDash, no, that the gig economy didn't exist when I started in this. Yeah. And so 
that I just wanted to harp on that conversation a little bit because I it drives me nuts for you to say one percent of people are successful. What? What? This, this argument's so bad. Like literally, I don't know how else to explain this. Like they're trying to purposely like mess with our words for people that don't know our arguments. Ninety nine point six percent of people in the industry either will make no money or lose money and actually go into debt over it. And again, debt can be a little or a lot, but debt's debt in my opinion. But people that are in the one percent, even for example, I'm gonna pull up it works income disclosure statement. It literally shows that the majority of people, a part of this company, 83% of participants are hardly making anything a month completely. Like not even a lot, not even anything that could be life changing by any means. We say that one people at the top, yeah, they're successful and they're making a fuck ton of money. But the rest of the people, sure they could be making some, but the majority, the literal high 80s to 90% of participants in all the companies are hardly making anything. That's our issue. It doesn't like, yeah, and it's true, like so many, I mean, if you talk, well, I'll backtrack on that, but um, I think that so many people, like they don't, they, they think it has to be this huge thing and they feel like, oh, I have to be a Jesse Lee or I have to be somebody who's at the top 1% or I have to be all stuff. And like, you don't, you got to talk to a couple people. And like, it's, we're talking about Uber Eats, or you're talking about getting a, get a part-time job at Starbucks or a part-time babysitting job. All of these things, my friends do, but they're not willing to like, you know, pick up their phone and utilize something that they're already doing. Like to me, that that's a huge missed opportunity. Like people are going farther away from where they want to be, like home with their family, whatever, um, to make 10 bucks an hour, which nobody's, nobody's knocking that. But like you have an opportunity literally in the palm of your hand and people are like, you're a scam artist. Like what? Yes. Sorry, but 100% Colleen, I will fully agree. In my opinion, both of these people in this damn video are con artists. They are complete scam artists in my opinion, completely. Her friends, one, she's said at the beginning she's not going to shit on somebody's job, but then she's now shitting on somebody's job, acting as if they're too stupid to see the multi-level marketing company as a good opportunity. But they're right, because at least with the job, maybe that they're getting $10 an hour, it's promised, right? It's promised income. Again, is it logical to join the multi-level marketing company now for the first five months, not make shit or start a small job or start a second job or something else right now that will immediately get you paid? Some people are desperate. I don't know if some of these people are connecting the dots on here, but a lot of people are desperate and don't want to wait on a chance. And again, if this is such a good opportunity. Riddle me this. Why are the failure rates the same across the income disclosure statements? Every income disclosure statement shows the exact same failure rates and the same numbers. Yeah. And I think that hurts people, by the way. So, I mean, the whole conversation hurts people. This entire anti, it's not even just, this is going to be a deeper conversation for a second, but it's not even just the anti MLM movement right now. It's this anti movement period that yeah. I don't understand. This whole let's cancel people because I don't agree with 100% of what they do, I don't understand. I've never been somebody who's like, oh, you know what? I don't like what Colleen does. So I'm going to go ahead and go on all her stuff. I'm going to report her. I'm going to have all my friends report her. I'm going to comment. About, like, you guys, let me give you an example. So when people try to tell you that, um, no, 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 we, are, we just have a problem with the profession. We're not attacking people. No, we're not, we're not a bully for calling you out. Colleen, like, they literally called Colleen a holo Holocaust haircut the other day. <laughs> Like, that's not bullying. They, no. they throw on, like, wigs to make fun of colored extensions in my hair and tell me, say I look like a man, I'm manic, I'm bipolar, um, she's absolutely psychotic, she's mentally unstable. You're, you're not- I'm gonna just say this right here. I think the people that really have the actual good motivation, they're not the ones spreading that shit out and saying that. That's not okay to say Colleen looks like someone that is a Holocaust victim. That's fucked up. I would never be okay with that. You don't say those things. That is not something you're okay with. The personal attacks are not cool. Yes, there are crazies. And again, I would like to remind you that yes, I get it that they get hate, but I've personally literally gotten horrific death threats. I have gotten crazy things. Many of my fellow creators have gotten the same things. We've gotten personal attacks and everything all the time. We both get them. I don't support those people. I literally have said in channels before, anyone that does that stuff can fuck off. I don't like those types of people. And that's not what I personally represent. That's not what I'm cool with. That's not ethical. Again, though, they're only focusing on the minuscule small amount of people versus that. Like, th that makes no sense to me talking about profession you're trying to get people triggered so that they report people and so if you can sit on that throne and feel high and mighty about your cancel culture and your group think good for you good for you but uh i could never be that person and so i don't even get 
angry. Yet she is the same individual that sent a shitty ass cease and desist to my best friend and trying to scare her, even though it was completely BS. The same person that has actually allegedly threatened my best friend before. The same person who has allegedly said very vile things about my friend, her husband, and other things. I'm just saying, I call bullshit. People that do unethical things like this need to be reported, okay? And if you're doing unethical things, something can happen. This is why we recommend people to report individuals like Jesse Lee and Colleen to the FTC because that can actually make some changes, which it does. And it's not cancel culture. And I'm sorry, but people that do unethical things don't deserve a platform. We're not gonna be people nowadays that just sit by and let shitty things happen to people. We're gonna start talking about it. If you keep continuously fucking up and doing very bad things, you deserve to have your entire reputation snatched from you. About any of this, because the level of compassion I have for people who are that venomous and they think they're saving the world in anything, Thanks. whether it's anti-MLM or it's anti-whatever, Joe no Rogan, or it's anti-anything. I'm like, who do you think you're saving? Because you're saving nobody. Nobody. You're literally saving nobody. And I, I just think it's so toxic. And I said this and I'm- Comment down below. I'm gonna have this at the beginning of this video too. Comment down below right now. We're gonna prove a point here. If you were in an MLM and you got out because of any creator or any person, any individual that whether it was Instagram, whether it was a YouTuber, whoever it was, comment down below your experience and the person that helped you because I'm trying to see something. I know my fellow creators, the fellow individuals that are against this have helped people. So personally, I've been doing this for over two years now. I'm very proud of that. I've, I literally started this when I was 19 years old and I'm almost 22 now. And I personally know I've helped thousands and I'm very thankful for that. I know many other friends of mine have helped thousands. This is helping people. Calling people out, showing them their top leaders and how crazy they're acting or how manipulative they're being, showing the physical proof instead of just word vomiting, having the actual legit deep dives that show why the company is so problematic, that's helping people. But lying on the internet and using your influence for a negative impact, that's what's actually hurting people more. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm calling it publicly now because we've got you know 500 here, we've got, I've got hundreds here, the podcast, God knows, that's well, that's huge. Um, and then 50 over here. I'll tell you right now, I called something out the other day and I know it will, I know what's going to change. I made a point and I know you saw it because you commented to me about this. You are horrifically anti-women in this movement in particular. Horrifically. Like the level of women hating women in the anti-MLM movement is stunning. Can I just say something? Just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I automatically have to support other women. Let's get that out of the way. I am someone that's going to hold you accountable before I support you because of you being a woman, okay? I don't give a shit who you are in general. If you're doing unethical shit, that doesn't mean I have to support you and like you. Anti-woman for showing facts, literally every video, y'all can go through every video. There are facts, there are numbers, there's statistics, there's proof. That is not anti-woman that is calling out unethical things and having the proof of why I believe so. There is no proof in this entire video. There is no proof in any other content that she makes. There is no proof in anything, whether it's Colleen or Jesse's, not a bit but we're anti-woman. And if you would like to say that I'm wrong, I would like to I would like to respectfully ask you, where are the videos about the men? Because if you want to talk- Hey babe, literally, uh, I'm not even gonna lie. Two days ago, I had two videos go up about men. Other people have men that they talk about. 100%. Do we see a lot of men there? Not a bit. Do we talk about them? Absolutely. We already make videos about men, Jesse. It's not gonna start up because you say it's gonna start up. We already talk about men. About the network marketing. Now there will be men videos. I'm calling it right now. They're gonna start making anti-men. They're already there. I'm gonna pop up examples. They already exist. Oh my God, literally. She chooses to make a point and act as if we've never made it before. And she's like, I'm already calling it. It's already there, dumbass. Videos in MLM, just to be like, no, see, I, I can talk about him too. It's too late. I just called you out on your BS, you BSer. Right. Okay, but um. <laughs> It's not too late if I've already posted and other people have already posted content about men. For someone who wants to educate, her research is lacking. Oh, they'll come out now, though. Like, they'll leave that little sound bite out of this. That'll get edited out. <laughs> but it's okay. We got the recording. I know it's the truth. But here's the real truth. Network marketing is dramatically female-centric. I believe it's 76% women, if my statistics are correct. Mostly women. Now, women are natural. Hey. So then why do you think that a lot of our reactionary videos have women? Because do you see majority of top leaders in It Works, for example, men? Nope, most of them are women. 
Do we see in Saint, all of them are women. Do we see in Prove It, majority of them are women? Use it, please. Holy shit. If you're gonna have an argument, please do it well. Please argue properly. Like, please stop making this so easy for me. Sellers, 80% of purchases made in a household are, are decided upon by women. Women shop, women sell, women buy. It's very natural because we are talkers. This is all the way the female brain works compared, compared to the male brain, okay? Mm -hmm. If you can, you can look up science studies, all right? It's, it's yep. dangerous when you, when you offend a smart woman, right? So anyway, all right, so 76% of women. If you look at the businesses where men are making a lot of money, because it is true, at the top, there are a lot of men, mm -hmm. a lot, okay? I'm on every single stage, every single time, all of them, all of them surrounded by men with these gigantic checks. You look at the Network Marketing Hall of Fame, the million dollar year earners, it's man, 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 woman, man, 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 man. We don't edit out the shit you say, babe. We literally hold you accountable and we give you an opportunity to speak. I'm not editing it out, but I'm leaving it there to prove how wrong you are, which we can easily show that. Like, good God. Man, man, woman, woman, man, man. Tons of men. Men, I will tell you, are the ones who solely recruit. Men, yep. men are the ones, it's their nature to be very, very boom, yeah. instant driven, action driven, get the result, be done, mm -hmm. okay? They're recruiting however many legs they need, whether that's two or three, generally speaking, they'll get two recruits, three recruits, they'll stack whatever they need to stack, and the women are the ones building ethically under them with customers, with team members, running calls, nurturing, running incentive contests, doing all yes. of the nurturing work, and you're damn right, it's a man. So I will tell you, I very intentionally joined only a woman mm -hmm. when I chose my upline for mm -hmm. this company. Absolutely yep. only joined a woman. Yeah. Okay? And yep. for the record, because people go, oh, you can never out earn an upline. Um, yeah, you can. I dramatically out earn an absolute living legend in network marketing. So thank you, take a seat. I'm yeah. sure debunk all their little stupid rumors, living legend in network marketing. So thank you, take a seat. I'm yeah. sure debunk all their little stupid rumors, right? So I'm telling you that because if you want to attack people and you want to attack the model, do not attack the housewife who wants to make $100 a month and save $100 a month for a year and buy herself a Neverfull bag because she's never had a Louis Vuitton. Do not attack the, the student who is drowning in debt because for whatever reason, our government does not get rid of student loans, okay? We do not forgive student loan debt. It's written into our, into, our, into our laws, okay? Who wants to pay off their student loans? How dare you? How dare you? I'm sorry, but calling us disgusting, but at the very beginning, you said that we call them victims. But now you're saying we don't. You're the one that's not staying consistent with the argument. We have vocally multiple times stated that. And again, I'm sorry, but do not speak for individuals like myself. I was that college student that was severely in debt during the pandemic. And I'm sure other people can do that. Don't speak on people that you know nothing about because you're the same one making money off of that poor college student. And again, most people that are in there are being sold a way of making money. So again, preying on the most vulnerable people we're not calling them out. I'm sorry, but those are the people that are vulnerable. Those are the people we want to protect from people like these two. That is what we're calling out. I have multiple times and many other people have stated those are the vulnerable individuals. Those are the people that I want to learn and get out. That is what my channel is targeted at for people to see that. That's why I only call out top participants or people with a major influence because I want people who are in the lower percentages or in the rest of the majority of the company to visually see their top leader be being deconstructed and shown exactly why they're unethical. That's why I do it. Like, they say our argument isn't consistent, but they're jumping with their labels of what we say and don't say. Like, Why don't you actually ask them their customer numbers? Because it's, it's amazing. Oh, well, they order their product underneath of a customer account. Okay, so that's one customer. That's, that's one customer. Okay, so what about the other thousands and thousands or hundreds and hundreds or dozens and dozens of customers they have? If that's one customer that woman has to, yes, get another source of income from her, from her business, and now she has, you're just ignoring the hundreds of other customers? Because that doesn't make sense to me. And if you're not ignoring the customers, we are vocalizing that the majority of the customers are the promoters in general. We can see the most money that's made in MLMs comes from internally purchasing of products by people that are inside of the company. Well, yes, there are external customers. Absolutely, those do exist. But those are very small amount compared to where the actual money comes from, which is from recruitment or majority of the time internal pr purchasing of products from internal participants. Worried about a sustainable business model also doesn't make sense to me because I, I was turned Terminated, very open about this. I was terminated wrongfully from my first ever network marketing company. Okay. I sued that company for anybody who's wondering what happened. I won. I got paid. 
Okay, I got paid in arbitration, right? That's just the fact. It's all okay. I don't know about that one. I'm gonna have to ask Miss Chelsea about it and look into that if she was actually like paid from that hill. I'll look into it. Who knows? I'm sorry. I don't trust these people because they have a track record of lying. Hence this video. So we're gonna actually stop this video right now. That was a lot. There is a part two. So stay tuned for tomorrow. All right, we are not off to a good start and the amount of lies and trying to construe all of our arguments and our words in this is absolutely pathetic. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys in part two. See ya.